Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3, back with another kicking graphic novel review. Today we have one from Dark Horse Books and 20th Century Fox, Predator Omnibus Volume 2. Uh, it was a little, maybe about like a year ago I did the first Predator Omnibus. It was, it was a while back. Uh, but I'm finally getting around to doing Volume 2. Quick read over the back of the book. Trophy hunters from another world hiding in plain sight, drawn to heat and conflict. A historical scourge, lethal specters, powerful, savage, merciless, utilizing their feral instincts and otherworldly technology in the sole pursuit of the most dangerous game. Man. Whether hunting the blazing desert of the southeast, stalking the claustrophobic woods of the Pine Barrens, or infiltrating a maximum security penitentiary, the Predators take no prisoners and leave only death in their grisly wake. But even these bestial killing machines can meet their match when men swallow their fear and channel their own primal rage. And the Hunter becomes the Hunted. Dark Horse Comics set the comics industry on its ear with its expansion of the Predator mythos. Comics so true to the spirit of the Fox film blockbuster that concepts were incorporated into the Predator screen universe. Predator Omnibus Volume 2 continues this complete presentation of these classic tales, some never before collected, featuring over 300 gripping story pages in full color, pinned by a who's who of top writers, including acclaimed crime novelist Andrew Vach, his foray into graphic fiction, by the way, uh, Randy Stradley from Alien vs. Predator, and John Acruti from The Mask, and illustrated by Evan Dorkin, Jordan Raskin, Derek Thompson, and others. So, uh, a lot of this book was actually pretty boring. The thing about the Predator aliens, the Yahuja, if you will, is that they're pretty one-dimensional. They all have basically the same motivations, basically the same honor code. I know they're bad bloods and stuff, but most Predators you see are going to have relatively the same weapons and the same motivations to hunt, uh and fight, and it, it's, and it almost always comes down to them being basically invincible until, like, one lone human with usually some kind of tr special training takes down the Predator, but just barely, and then the government covers it up. That's every, that's basically every Predator story in Volume 1 and Volume 2. Like, it starts out with one in the desert, and, uh, Predator's killing people <laughs> in the in the desert and just a uh, native american soldier has to take him down and that's basically the story he does go kind of a wall to do it uh so he does get punished which there we'll see more in the sequel story uh which is kind of uh you'll see that more in the sequel story which is later in the omnibus but yeah that's that's basically his whole thing he hunts the predator it's not it's it's basically just the same thing we always see the predator in but this time it's the desert uh you know it's just the same thing but a different environment which isn't anything special at all it's it's absolutely stuff that we've pretty much already seen sorry it's true though uh, the art's kind of cool, though. Kind of gro really grotesque-looking uh, Predator in that. And then we get kind of a uh, black and white one in the bayou. In the bayou! Or at least the swamp. <laughs> and there's, like, some criminals in the swamp, and Predator kills them. It's kind of just a one-issue story. Maybe even a back-of-an-issue story. I don't know, I'm not reading them single issue, you know? But, uh, then we kind of get back to the city, and we have this team of people, like, government-funded people, who all have personal vendettas with, uh, a predator. And it's a predator, uh, who's done a lot of killing, but there is a, uh, serial killer who's actually not a serial killer, and he just took credit for all the Predator's kills. Because uh, he wanted to be bad. He killed, like, two women. And, like, two of the kills were actually his. 
and then the rest were the Canyon Killer. And of course the kills kind of continued after he turned himself in, so, you know, but no one in prison messes with him, and he gets three squares a day, and uh, a bed to sleep in, and he, he he's like famous also. Uh, and he really loves that until, of course, uh, his rep gets too big, and then the Predator's like, hey, he's a big killer, so I'll be an even bigger killer if I go kill him, but the, the kills were the Predator's kills, so it's not actually a big trophy for the Predator. Oops. Also, I want to say most of the Predators in these Dark Horse books basically just look like the two from the first two movies, the City and Jungle Hunter. They, they don't have any big fancy designs. The only real memorable one in this book is Golden Angel in the final issue. Uh, which is one of my favorite Predator issues of all time, I, I do have to say. But yeah, there's also kind of like a race war going on within the prison, and then all the races have to unite to stop the Predator, very on the nose. Uh, and there's a lot of offensive stuff in this specific story, especially, but also, you know, it's based on the Predator, which is a pretty offensive franchise, so it's all good. <laughs> You know, it had that message, a sort of kind of message of unity in it. And then we get one that's uh, set more in the past with uh, like a mobster, kind of like a, a 20s mobster, uh, and the Predator comes for him, and they take down the Predator, which is pretty cool. Uh, that one was actually kind of neat because uh, the guy who took down the Predator was just a straight-up lunatic. And then we get our sequel story for the Native American who killed the Predator, and then his grandfather tells him a story of, like, his grandfather's grandfather, um, who fought what seems to be the same Predator a long time ago when, uh, those filthy whites were trying to, uh, drill oil, uh, on sacred land, you know? And then we get to a Predator story that I really, really liked. All those other stories were kind of like, seen it, you know? And they, they're basically just the same stories all the time, but in different settings. Like, uh, one was set in the desert, one was in a swamp, and then the next one was in a prison. Uh, predator just killing people in the prison because it was a high-security, high like, you know. And this other one is about, like, this filmmaker who had, like, two big hits, but now he's kind of a hack. And it's set in, like, the 50s when TV came about. And uh, it references, like, William Castle's gimmicks. Because lots of movies in the 50s had to kind of become gimmicky to draw people to the theaters. Because people were like, why would I go to the theaters when I can sit in my living room and watch things, you know? So, uh, he makes this gimmick, which is, like, 4D, where you put on these glasses and you can see, like, the invisible monster that's on the screen in the drive-in. Uh... Which is a fun, cool idea. But the glasses also allow you to see the Predator when it cloaks. And this kid, uh, the nephew of the director who made the film, puts on the glasses, sees the Predator, steals some of the Predator's little bombs, and the Predator is hunting him down to get his bombs back. The Predator doesn't really want to kill the kid unless he has to, uh, because it's just a kid, so it's not real sport, you know? Not very honorable. <laughs> So, uh, like, the kid's running around trying to get people to believe that the monster is real, but every time someone else puts the glasses on, they pretty much die, until his uncle uses them to see the monster. Uh, they flee to the drive-in. Oops! There goes my berserker. They flee to the drive-in, where the movie is playing. And, uh... <laughs> so everyone at the movie can see the Predator, and they see, like, the police fighting the Predator, and all this stuff. And it's, like, lining up with the events in the movie. And so it becomes a huge hit. <laughs> it becomes a huge hit because people think it's, like, a gimmick. And they're like, wow, this is really cool. It all looks so real. Uh... <laughs> and then uh, the guy's producers are like, we want you to make a thousand more pictures with this. This is insane. It's, it's going to be so big. And it's really, really funny. Like... A comedic... I didn't expect a comedic story, and it really, really broke formula, which made me appreciate it a thousand times more. Plus, it was just good. It was just straight-up good. And then the last story in this was actually the first Predator comic I ever read, way back in the day. 
uh, when these Omnibi were easier to find. It's about a golden angel fighting some pirates that try to take some treasure from their captain. And the captain wants to return the treasure to the church. Uh, and then he ends up fighting alongside the golden angel uh, predator, you know. Uh, and then they're going to kill each other, but then the captain gets shot in the back. And he holds out, you know, that little flintlock pistol for, from the end of Predator 2. And he's like, take it which is where the Predator uh, copied that from. And then the Predator uh, is like, he was a noble warrior, honorable, digs him a grave, throws an extendable sword in the grave and says, take it, you know, and Predator sounds. Uh, and then all the, pir all the pirates were, of course, killed, as I said. But uh, that just that's just kind of shows how Golden Angel got that, uh, you know, pistol from the end of Predator 2 and where he copied that speech from. Fun, Just a fun little short story to kind of just give some backstory on something you know golden angel which i need a neca figure of actually i'd really like that but uh yeah that is it for the dark horse predator omnibus volume two uh you know the first like three stories are just whatever uh the prison one was i guess kind of cool but also it just it kind of just felt like the same thing still and then I really liked the uh, last two stories. I do have some questions about the Yahuja honor code, though, because uh, Golden Angel was about to fight and kill that captain after all the others were dead. But then the captain got shot in the back uh, and died. And the Predator was like, he was honorable. But it's very weird. So was that did that make that honorable? Because... Is shooting a foe in the back dishonorable? That doesn't seem to track. Because, like, yeah, I guess it would be for a warrior code, but they also have a hunter's code. And for a hunter, shooting your prey in the back is, like, a good thing. But for a warrior, it's not. So do the warrior and hunter aspects of the Predator's honor code ever conflict? Uh, it kind of raised a few questions for me, to be honest. Um... But that is kind of it uh, for Predator Omnibus Volume 2 from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, I think it's pretty expensive if you want a physical copy. But I think that there are uh, there, there are some digital ones out there you can get. It's about 355 pages. Uh, an enjoyable book, but... Once again, a lot of the Predator stories are just the same thing in a different setting or time period. That Most Predator stories are kind of just the same thing, sadly. So that is it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll see you all next time.